uh, the morning. I live in a small town in Texas. The morning, it's the little things, you know? I'm always used to the hustle and bustle. You know, wake up, get up, wake up, get up. Even though quarantine can be very daunting on days, but it has allowed me to step closer to nature, to step closer to who I am, to step closer to the creator, God. Step closer into my day. Step closer to get to know me. Hi, I'm Stacy Sherelle Dixon. Come follow me for a day. So I live right by a busy highway. So part of it's really quiet in the country and their other half's a busy highway. I used to not like it, but now I, cause I'm really private. I don't like seeing a lot of people, you know, cause people always blow and they say, <laughs> they'll say, oh, I saw you here. I saw you there. But now I see it as an opportunity that I can show people love. I can wave at people. I can smile at people. You know, I can say, hey, how are you? You know? And it could bring us, I could have the opportunity to bring people closer together. And I think that's the best part because you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what kind of day, what kind of turmoil they had to go through that day. And people say I smile all the time. So even though it gets really noisy and it's like, I'm making a YouTube video, but you know, that's life. Sometimes life is noisy. Sometimes you have to battle the dichotomy, the confusing dichotomy of peace and chaos at the same time. But in the midst of it, it's okay. Cause that's life. Life isn't totally peace and totally chaos or totally good and totally bad. Some days you can have the highest highs and some days you'll have the lowest low. I mean, that's just life but we can thrive in it. So in the stillness is where I found my joy. I wish I can have some clip of you, me, of me going scuba diving or bungee jumping or um, touring Buckingham Palace or, I don't know, riding a dinosaur. <laughs> Maybe I'm not that cool, but this is just my typical day, but that's the thing. Social media, sometimes we're we're just, it makes us compare ourselves in a bad way. It's beautiful, it connects us, but also it could make us feel low. Oh my gosh, they're traveling to Italy or they just got a new job or they just lost 30 pounds and then you look at yourself and you feel discontent. But really your journey is your own. And I know it seems I'm just talking to the camera for the video, but really this is what I do every morning. I make videos on my YouTube channel and I talk to people I like to encourage. So this is just a typical day. This is where I work out on this path. This, um, this, I'm at my grandmother's house. I live right next door to her. And she passed away two years ago from pancreatic cancer. And she was so dear to my heart. I'm so grateful we got to go to Hawaii together, but I took that hard. That was my first real death I experienced. And it was crushing to me to watch her, watch the cancer just deteriorate her body, but her spirit and her love was still there. And I'm so grateful that I was able to take care of her. I'm so grateful that she got to see me graduate from university. Um, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. And yeah, so me being at her home, it brings me closer to her. And yeah, she used to walk this path every morning. Um, yeah, she was very healthy. She was a feisty little thing. She was 81 and full of spice. But yeah, um, so I'm walking this morning. Um, yeah, and then I wanna get donuts after this. <laughs> me and my dogs are gonna go get donuts. Isn't that funny? <laughs> but yeah. So right now I'm in my grandmother's backyard. And like I said, memories. I would, I remember I, I would come out here, be working out or playing or making videos and I would tap on her window 
and I called her nanny. Be like, nanny, I'm outside. I'm just letting you know that I'm here. So you don't think it's some crazy person running around. <laughs> and yeah, so I just wanted to show you my day, July 25th. I want you to show, I want to show you just, you know, me reflecting. And it's so stunningly beautiful. I think trees are a testament. I mean, they bring us so much life. They bring us food, they bring us shade, they help bring us oxygen. And these trees have been here longer than my grandmother's been alive, even though she's passed on. And these trees will probably be here when I'm gone, when that time comes. So it also just reminds me to stand tall. It, these trees are resilient so resilient and no matter what i mean these trees seen so many hurricanes hurricane harvey um so many hurricanes in the texas gulf coast but they're still standing oh that's a pear tree um they're still standing and i just want to encourage you and encourage myself especially in these times we're living in you know we've never seen times like this before in 2020 it's so daunting but just know that we'll stand we will stand and we will thrive and we will continue and i like my mom just called me i'm recording this on my phone she just called me that's real life it interrupted what i was saying and you know sometimes i'll get frustrated like mom i'm recording a video but that's daily life it doesn't have to be perfect and i'm so glad that my i have a mom that can call me that's alive to call me I'm just so grateful. But like I was saying, our legacy will still stand like these trees. No matter what's gonna come our way, we're gonna, we're gonna endure it. You know, one thing that doesn't lie is this Texas humidity. Woo, I am sweating. Wow, and it's only 7.30 in the morning. But I want to show you, I love this porch area of my grandmother's home. Um, and look at this bamboo tree. Wow, I love to come out here and just meditate and talk to God and just be with my thoughts and sing, dance. It's just so therapeutic to me. And yeah, I'm about to do that now. Now I'm gonna walk back across the pasture to my house. And I've learned that I love this idea of July 25th being this day where we can look in each other's lives. I'm sure some people will have amazing events, a birth of a child, a wedding day, um, maybe even a graduation, I don't know, but Life is so much more than the big accomplishments. I mean, I love the big accomplishments. Who doesn't? But personally, for me, so many times I focus on the big accomplishments that I miss the daily. I miss the beauty in the mundane, right? There's so much beauty in the mundane. I'm going to show you my grandfather and my grandmothers like i said it's noisy because i live by a busy highway but that's real life i'm going to show you their light um it has their name on it albert and mary dixon i never got to meet my grandfather but he was a professor and my grandmother was a teacher she taught um at a majority white school which is kind of unheard of, um, you know, for a woman who was born in the 40s, but they both had master's degrees and they both taught students of all races and they inspire me to strive for black excellence, to love all people. My grandmother never treated anyone differently and 
there's even a museum of um, black history here in our town and she's in there um with the with the classes she taught with the students she taught and it's just a testament of if you believe in your dreams you can achieve anything well anyway my grandfather died in his um late 40s of a heart attack so i never got to meet him but i feel close with him i know he was a bookworm like me but every night this light is lit and it has their name on it so just another thing about legacy and that you'll stand tall Today, this July 25th matters. This day matters. Your legacy will live on after you. What are you going to do with today? Wanted to show you um, my mother's patio. Well, it's my patio too because I live here. But yeah, I um, was just, I graduated from college um, in filmmaking actually from the University of Texas at Austin. And I've traveled all around the world. I've done mission trips. I love what I do. But coming to live back home wasn't a part of my plan. But my mom took sick and I came back home to help her. And now my dad's going through health problems. Um, but I'm so glad. I mean, for years I was there to her, for every doctor's appointment, driving to Houston, Texas, the medical center, which is the top in the nation. You know, it's about an hour drive for us. I was right there encouraging her, giving her kisses. And that just shows the every day. That meant so much to her for me being here. And I still get to live my dreams, but I get to help the one I, I love the most in the same breath. So she, gardening is a part of her therapy. It's very therapeutic to her since she's in a lot of pain a lot of times. So she did this all by herself. She planted the rocks, she did the mat, she did the tables. She did it all by herself. The, look at this. And it's restrained Hurricane Harvey, which was a devastating hurricane, but thank God, you know, we didn't have too much damage. We did have damage. Look at my cactus, who I named Cucumber. I had, a, I had this cactus in my apartment. Um, when I lived in Austin for college and now it was little in a pot but now it's huge but do what you love my my mom loved doing this and it was therapeutic so find something that you love to do that can help you endure the pain this is not ideal but I just came back from my walk I had a breakfast bar before but I'm going to, I'm eating some candies some gummy candies my boyfriend calls me the gummy monster and my cavities probably gonna I think I have another cavity I have a dentist appointment for two weeks from now but who doesn't like candy in the morning after a workout huh <laughs> you may ask me what I love what do you love Stacy you ask I love Ellie this is Ellie Mae Kelly Dixon, the love of my life. She's nine years old and I adopted her. Actually, funny story, I found her on Craigslist. I was in class, a social media class at the University of Texas at Austin. And I was on my phone because I was determined to get a weeder dog. I scoured every animal shelter in Austin. And I found her in my hometown on Craigslist. I actually got in trouble. Um, my teacher was like, Stacy, don't be on your phone next time but it was worth it it was a friday and i drove three and a half hours from austin to my hometown to pick up this perfection now i'm gonna be honest with you when i first saw her i saw a picture of her the um article said sweet girl needs home and she had this patch of skin on her i don't know if you, if you can see it well actually it's healing you can't really see it right there but it's healing it used to be this big patch and i hate to admit it but at first when i saw her when i saw that patch i didn't want her i thought about what other people would think maybe they think she was she was sick maybe they think she was you know they'll look down on her and now i hate that i thought that um and when i when i looked at the patch i can tell the owner was like you know please accept her and Man, I can tell you this dog is the biggest blessing of my life. I had her since 2014, and what if I would have denied her because of a patch? 
that she had who cares what people think who cares if people don't accept her she is perfect and she's brought so much joy to my life you know i've been through so many hard things and she's been right there she's just my heart and i want to share her i thought i'd never love another dog again i lost my dog callie my chihuahua i had when i was three to twelve and i was like i don't want another dog and then i fell in love with wiener dogs in high school and I used to tell God I'm like God I want a fat black weenie dog I would tell all my friends and I have a picture on Facebook to this day of a of a picture of a random dog that looks just like her and when I look back I'm like wow I got just what I wanted she's so sweet and I love her because it shows me that it shows me that no matter like you may not want a certain house because maybe it doesn't have it's, it doesn't fit the Instagram aesthetic or maybe the guy you're in love with doesn't have the six pack body or maybe the job is not the high paying job, but it's an entry level job. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. It's what the heart that matters and whatever everything that glitters isn't gold, but the best things in life sometimes can get passed over. So that's what I love. <laughs> So, a thing I fear is my dog has congestive heart failure. She's had it for three years, which is a miracle that she's still doing well, but, and she has Cushing's disease, and she has problems with her liver. So she's on several medications right now, and it can get very expensive. And I love this dog so much. And also my mom is on a lot of medications because of her health problems. I guess the thing I fear the most is sometimes when my dog is sleeping or my mom is sleeping i'll check to see if they're still breathing i fear them dying i fear the people i love the most dying i don't fear myself dying i feel my loved ones dying but you know that's really bleak and dark i remember being a kid and you know just relaxing in the tub it should have been relaxing and just thinking, okay, when I'm 16, my mom will be 50. And I used to think, when you get 50, you're about to die. She's about to sneeze since her allergies, ill. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not editing it out. It's real life, a day in my life. My dog sneezes and has allergies and gets snot everywhere. But like, yeah, that's something I may fear. Um, I used to think that. I used to plan like how long I have with my mom, how long I have with my dad and my dog but in that i'm also grateful for these things because it allows me to appreciate my mom more it allows me to appreciate my dog more and to cherish every single day especially when my grandmother was dying of cancer every day i had with her was a blessing and so this july 25th i get to share it may not this may not be the most exciting day or this is just an ordinary day for me but truly it's extraordinary because I get another day with the ones I love. I wish I could have my grandmother back today. I wish if only for one day, but I can't. So, but I do, but I have to look at the ones I do have. And so, yeah. Okay, so I am in my bathroom. I'm about to do my natural hair. So hair is so important for a black woman. I, a black woman. It's, it can be, I mean, for so long we've been told that our hair is ugly, not good enough. And usually I wear my hair straight. I mean, I've been wearing my hair straight most of my life. But, I mean, I didn't even know I know I had curly hair. And it's just like a, like, like I said, I love wearing my hair straight. I want to get blonde highlights for my birthday in January. But there's, my hair grows the most when it's natural. And yet, it's sometimes, and it's crazy, sometimes I feel awkward wearing my natural hair. Like, the hair that coils and grows from my scalp, I get like, you know, like, it's like weird, which is crazy. It shouldn't be weird because it's my hair. That's why I love watching natural hair videos. That's how I learned how to grow my hair from natural hair YouTube videos. I spent, I literally, no exaggeration, I spent like, 200 hours in my dorm over the course of my college education watching hair videos. It was fun to see that like, wow, black girls can grow long hair. So I'm just using a conditioner. It smells like coconut. Um, I'm just gonna keep it moisturized. And I'm excited to see how long it could get. This is the longest my hair's ever been, you know? And it's just not about length. It's just feeling confident in 
who you are, knowing that you're enough, like no matter what your hair looks like, that nothing is wrong with you. You know, if people make fun of you, the problem's not with you, the problem is with them. So yeah, I'm just doing my hair. Sometimes I'm not gonna lie, I love it, but it does take a lot of work, you know? It does, you know, straight hair is easier. But you know, good things take time, so I won't complain. Oh my gosh, my dog is barking. <laughs> she's on the couch, I left her on the couch. She used to be able to jump off, but now she's getting older, she really can't. So, let me go get her. I love dancing with Ellie. Since we can't have any music in this video, we will dance to the silence. Do, 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 Her, her morning snack and she looks forward to it. Edgy, come on! Snack time! Snack time! Yay! Snack time! And she's looking for more! Let's see if she comes follow us. <laughs> you Yay! What would I like to change, you ask? Well, right now I'm washing my face. Um, I have a acne soap and facial wash. What I like to change is how people judge people, how people judge people on your appearance. People b bully you for your appearance and it's not what, what's on the outside that matters, it's what's on the inside of, that counts. And of course, your outside is beautiful and you should love how you're made and who you are, but I hate how people can just be so mean and hurtful to people because of how they look. Because I um, had acne for most of my life. Right now, this is as clear as my skin has ever been. And I'm so grateful for my dermatologist. But in high school and in, in junior high, even in 2017, my acne was so bad. And I went to the dermatologist. And I remember when I was a kid, like I was at this summer camp you know, and I was like in high school and I was over the summer camp and there was this little kid who called me pizza face. And you think that it sounds like a little ha ha, but it really hurt me and it, it was embarrassing too. And then um, I was in junior high and there was this kid, my classmate, I was just minding my own business in the cafeteria line trying to get some junior high cafeteria pizza. And he's like, Stacey, why do you have all that on your face? And it's just so hurtful. Like people think you're dirty or you don't, you're not clean, but it's just a hormonal imbalance. And I was washing my face and going to the dermatologist, but thank God I find at 26, I finally have a skincare regimen and the right medicine that's helping me. Um, so it just shows you don't make fun of other people because it, it really hurts, you know? And I'm gonna be real transparent with you. So um, my mom used to have acne, adult acne, when she was in her 40s. Then I was a kid, I was really young, but I used to like make fun of her acne. And it's so crushing. I wish I can go back in time and just never do that. But I'm such a good daughter now, like I'm kind to her. I tell her how beautiful she is, but like, I have to go through, you know, sometimes I believe karma is real. I had to go through um being bullied to know how it felt and i would never bully anyone for their weight i know what it feels like to gain weight and you know you can't judge people from the outside and so this is what i do twice a day wash my face do my acne regimen and sometimes it is daunting but i'm just so grateful to have you know the resources the insurance the access to have clear skin, you know? So that's one thing I wish I could change. People making, making fun of people for their appearance. So I'm about to brush my teeth, um, change my clothes, and I'm gonna go out for the day with my mask because we're still 
kind of quarantined, but not really if you're in Texas. But things are still open. I still have errands to run, but got to do it with your mask. So I'll see you later. I'm going to go get a taco and my dog is going to come. I'm going to let you have experience one of the best tacos ever. I am giving Ellie her pills now. She takes four pills in the morning and six at night. Ellie! <laughs> the pill pocket disguises the, the pill taste because she thinks she's just getting a snack. Sometimes she can be difficult. I do this twice a day and Ellie has a lot of care. She's a senior dog. You know, sometimes it can get a little tiring, but I love it because I love caring for her. She's a gift. And sometimes as dogs get older, as people get older, we kind of lose respect for them. But those are times we're supposed to honor them most. Kiss it. So there's nothing like sweet watermelon on a hot summer day. Yum, yum, yum. And Ellie loves watermelon too. So sweet. Mmm. I try to eat mostly plant-based vegan. Hmm. Get some. Good, huh? This is where I absolutely love cheese. Mostly plant-based. Hmm. One other piece? Mm hmm Let's give Ellie some. Watermelon is safe and healthy for dogs. Good girl. <laughs> I wanted to show you part of my car. This wouldn't be a true um, a day in my life if I didn't show you my car because I'm in my car for so long. It's a Camaro and I absolutely love my car. I had my car since 2012. It was a graduation gift and I love it so much. High school graduation gift. Um, we've traveled all over. His name is Patrick. I know. So right now, I am driving to the cemetery to visit my grandfather who died last year. It is surrounded by a chemical plant. Where I live in the Texas Gulf Coast, we have tons of chemical plants. And my grandfather worked at a chemical plant, and my brother works in a chemical plant. It's very good jobs, but um, but this used to be all like you know homes, especially for Black people. This is where my grandparent, my mom grew up in this area, this city. Um, but the cemetery is right out here and we really work to preserve it. We don't want the, um, we don't want the chemical plant to build over the cemetery. Cause there, I have, I've read stories of people who they had to literally dig up their, their deceased loved ones because they wanted to build over it, which is terrible to me. Um, so yeah. And my family, we work to keep, you know, the cemetery nice and clean because, you know, a lot of these people don't have the best of headstones because they, you know, they were blacks didn't have that many, didn't that have that much access, you know, at later times. So my grandfather just got his headstone um, two weeks ago. We were waiting on, the, he was a veteran in the Korean War and we've been waiting on his headstone, but since the COVID-19, it's been a long process, but he finally got it. So I'm gonna go show it to y'all. This is headstone. Um, there's my grandpa, Eddie Allen Sr., a Korean vet. He had told me so many stories how he would pray to God, God, please bring me home. He has some comrades who didn't make it. And also, you know, he would tell me, he left his country, but he would tell me stories about how, which is why Black Lives Matter, it's not about black people being better, it's about, hey, we matter. Do you think we matter? We matter, we matter. You know, we wanna matter as equal as you because he told me when he came home from war, like he would have to sit in the back of the bus. He even had a um, certain white people call him dogs. Like, what? That's so sad. But my grandfather loved all people and he still had a forgiving part no matter who said mean things to him. And we should love all people, all races. And this is his mother, my great, great grandmother. History is so important, especially for black people. A lot of our history has been stripped from us. You know, we were stripped from our land. We didn't know we're stripped from our language, stripped from our names, stripped from our identities. So our history is how we preserve ourselves. 
So, thank you for honoring the legacy of my grandfather. I love to make him proud. He would always call me, you're going to be like Oprah. You're going to be like Oprah, Stacy. So I love sharing his story. Another thing I love about my car is I love jamming music in it. I love music. I love creating music. I just love music. And when my grandfather died, I was listening to NASA by Ariana Grande. And that song just, like, he's in heaven now. And that song just, like, calmed my heart. So I love jamming music. This car has been, I've cried so many tears in this car. car. I've had talks with God in this car. I've grown so much in this car as a woman, you know, from 18 year old when I got it to now 26 year old. So I'm not gonna blast music now, I'm gonna wait till I get out the cemetery to respect the dead. But yeah, I'm gonna go get a taco now. You're, are you ready to eat one of the best taco, breakfast tacos, Texas tacos in the world? I know you are. my hometown, but this is where I went to school, the town I went to school. I know it's kind of funny, but the town I live in doesn't really have a school. So yeah, small town living, less than 4,000 people. But here are the best tacos. Taco Loco! Woohoo! Hi, can I have a potato, egg, Actually, I'm sorry, potato, rice, and bean. Potato, rice, and bean. Yes, okay. and hot sauce and salt. Okay, then. Thank you. So, I just got my taco. You guys, it's a simple thing in things in life. I mean, I've been all over the world, and these are the best tacos to me. Potato, um, potato, rice, and bean. My absolute favorite is bacon, egg, and cheese, and potato, but since I'm trying to do plant-based now, um, yeah, that's what I got. I usually always get a Sprite, but I'm cutting back soda for the month, and I'm gonna go to Sonic and get it orange juice. Usually I would like go to my grandmother's house who lives in this town, or I would go to the park and eat, cause it's, a out, it's like a little um, trailer, so they don't have any eating spots. But since I am kind of um, on a time schedule, I have, have to meet up with my little cousin. It's her birthday today. I was gonna give her something. Um, well, her birthday isn't today. Her birthday was last week, but I'm giving her her birthday gift today. And also, I have to um, fill out a lot of forms, paperwork I need to do, files I need to upload, um, mail I need to get off, some blog posts for my website, stacysherell.com, I gotta work on. Yeah, um, I have to keep her, cause I'm so used to, and I, I study radio, television, film in the University of Texas. So I'm used to like, when I do film projects, I'm used to having a, playing my whole day around the project and making my my life the project, but this is bringing you into my life. And I have a lot of stuff that, sometimes life isn't all like cakes and popsicles. Sometimes you got to mail out papers and do documents and do things you don't want to do, but I'm grateful. Like I, my family hasn't been affected by COVID-19. You know, like so many blessings. I'm just, so many people are sick now. People are losing their jobs. My heart just goes out to them. So I have no reason to complain. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's it. I have a small orange juice with the EVR, so it's 2 Thank you. Okay, I got my orange juice. And it's about 11 in the morning right now. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that, because it's real life. You fell in my beautiful breakfast taco. Come on, you can share it with me. Yummy. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> so what I like to do is sit and watch YouTube videos and then I'm gonna go get Germex. I'm gonna hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer I will use. I'm gonna go get gas, post office. We have a lot to do. We'll get through it. So I'm about to drop this letter off. I have a cousin who is in prison and he's been in there for almost 13 years. And it's his birthday coming up, so I just want to write. Because of COVID, um, he really can't receive um, birthday cards, so uh, I just wrote him a beautiful um, letter. Um, but yeah, that's why prison reform is so important. Of course, we know what he did was wrong. He knows that. 
but he deserves a second chance at life. He has changed. He has, he has re, um, I just dropped the letter off, but I was saying he has changed. He is rehabilitated, you know? He knows his mistakes. He's even got degrees in, he, in, in prison. He's a changed man, and that's why rep prison reform is so important. Um, the goal of the Texas, you know, prison system on their website says is to rehabilitate inmates back into society and he is re rehabilitated so I'm just glad I can show him that I'm thinking about him. So the library is my safe haven. I love the library especially my local library. I love books. I'm a writer. I write on my blog and I write creative stories but it's just full of adventure and I feel my creative, my create, I feel most, most creative here. I get the most work done. I have a lot of things to work on. So, yeah. So I just spent a lot of time in the library doing paperwork that I need to do. And it was, I was fearing doing this. It was very daunting to me. And, you know, I researched how to fill out this paperwork beforehand. But you know, when I did it, it was pretty self-explanatory. Like, of course it took mental focus and effort. But um, I did it. So don't, sometimes we can defeat ourselves or make something more scary than it really is. You got this. So we are at the beach. The beach is one of my absolute favorite places besides an enchanted forest. Even though I've never been to an enchanted forest yet, but I can't wait to go. Pacific Northwest, twilight inspired, but I love the beach. I love the water. I love the ocean. This is Surfside Beach. And yeah, of course you see the chemical plants. I told you we're surrounded by plants, but I'm gonna show you the view. A fish just jumped. A lot of people fish. Like I mentioned before, I deal with a lot of a horrible back pain from having large breasts and eventually I'll get a breast reduction but not right now. So, you know, I've gone to physical therapy, a chiropractor, I did everything. So being at the beach, doing things that are relaxing really brings me peace. Of course, massages, but I can't get massages at the time, but the beach is definitely free. And I'm gonna show you, I love this spot right here. I love to come meditate, come pray, just relax. And I, sometimes I'll get really lucky and I'll see a dolphin. So maybe we'll see a dolphin today. This is where a lot of people fish. And we can be out here. Oh, I love the smell of, I love the smell of salt water. And we can be out here. Um, we just have to social distance. This is Surfside Jetty Park. Go, go, go. <laughs> So I love being in the sun and thank God my melanin literally thrives in the sun, even though I do wear sunscreen. But growing up and even now I struggle with, especially in the black community, there's this thing called colorism where the lighter you are, well colorism is just a discrimina discrimination, but really lighter skinned people have the um, superiority and darker skinned people, especially darker skinned women, are considered ugly. And that's so totally false. So I love seeing, being on YouTube and watching colorism stories where people tell how they were bullied, especially women, how they were bullied growing up, but now how they love their skin. You can read the comments. People are saying, you're so beautiful, queen. You're so beautiful. It's even in the Indian community, the Hispanic community, um, Asian community. So, me being in the sun is something I used to fear. Like, no, I don't want to get darker. Or looking at old pictures when I was a kid, when I was darker. Oh no, I'm ugly, but that's a lie. I'm beautiful. My skin is, it's kind of like a superpower. I can be out here and not burn. Not saying my skin is better than anyone who's lighter, but it's worthy. It's so worthy. Your skin is worthy. My skin is worthy. So here is my favorite plant, a cactus. <laughs> so yeah, here's the beach. You know, I've always used to want to move to California. I visited 
but I love Texas. I love living in Texas and Texas still has beaches. I love coming out here in the morning especially where the sunrise is awesome. There's a jetty part that goes way out there. One time I walked all the way to the end and it was so awesome. So I am at a local pawn shop. They have something called a blessing box where you can put non-perishable food items in and you can just pick up as you need. So I brought some canned goods and I went to drop them off. So come on. Okay, there's our six canned goods in the blessing box. <laughs> I like to think that peace is something that can't be taken from you. Peace is something that doesn't care how much you weigh, doesn't care how many followers you have on Instagram, doesn't care how straight and perfect your teeth are, doesn't care if you went to college. Hi, turtles. Hi, turtles. Peace and joy and love doesn't care how much is in your bank account, if you're fertile or not, if you're healthy, young, poor, peace is only what you can give yourself. And peace, I believe personally, you can only find in God. My favorite part of this um, park is the duckies. Let's go find them. Duckies, hello. Day. Are y'all doing good? Good. Wow, what a beautiful day. Y'all are looking so dapper. Yes, y'all are very dapper. I can't tell if which ones are boys or girls, but y'all are all beautiful. Yes, looking wonderful. Say hello to the people of YouTube. Okay, goodbye, you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. <laughs> So right now, I'm back at the post office. Well, a different post office in a different city. Um, I'm going to mail my friend in Canada a birthday card for his 38th birthday. Um, and I was just talking on the phone with my brother, um, through Bluetooth, of course. And I just think, even though this quarantine, we can't, I mean, we can't really see our friends or family as much. But I love how technology connects us, how technology can bring us together and to can even bring us sometimes closer than ever before. So I'm grateful. smart beautiful person I'm all sweaty for my workout but I feel great so I'm just leaving the grocery store and I got some healthy snacks but I also got some s'mores we're having s'mores tonight so the question is what's in my pocket okay to be honest my shorts have no pockets but my purse has a pocket and in the pocket of my purse I kept my where is it? Where is it? Oh, come on out. <laughs> it's in here. I feel it. My beautiful Valentine's Day gift I got from my boyfriend, my boyfriend Roland this year. Um, it's gorgeous. It's a heart. He took me to the jewelry store and told me to pick out anything. 
You see it? Hold on. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I love it. It's in my pocket because I was working out today. And I don't like it to get sweaty and, you know, all gross. But, um, yeah. Okay, fun fact. So, the city that I'm in, Lake Jackson, Texas. I don't live here, but I come here to work out, do all my errands, eat at tasty restaurants. It's close to where I live. But this is the birthplace of Selena Quintanilla Perez, the legendary Tejano singer. She inspires me so much. Her legacy is spelt here. We have all kind of murals um, here around for her. So, I just wanted to share that with you. I told you I spent a lot of time in my car. It's relaxing. It's nothing like being able to spend time with yourself. Of course, we love people, but it's nothing like self-love where you can take yourself out on a date and, you know, just, I've become very content with myself. I got a strawberry and Greek yogurt smoothie. And I know I told you I was plant-based, and I've dealt with a lot of, like, orthorexia and thoughts of bulimia um even when I was younger I was always trying to use lose weight even though I wish I could be that weight but I just want to be healthy you know and so even though I was vegan for a season I like being plant-based but you know I want the freedom I like cheese I like you know certain meats and there's nothing wrong with that dichotomy that balance so I got a beautiful salad um apple chicken um i got the cheese on it hold on let me open it up yeah an avocado yum 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 here you can have some joy i find joy when i'm one with the world when i'm one with nature when i'm one with god when I'm one with my body, when I'm loving how I was created, when I'm loving my features, when I'm encouraging myself, telling myself I'm worthy. I find love when I'm encouraging other people, when I'm serving others. I find love when I put myself first and not in a selfish way, but in a way of I matter. I find joy appreciating everything that's around me. How do you find joy? Welcome to Dixon Farmer Ranch. No, we have horses, but sometimes throughout the day they go out deeper in the pasture. But we have Mr. Donkey here. Whoa, oh my gosh, don't eat me. Please don't eat me. Oh, he's nice. <laughs> he's saying hi. I have Mr. Donkey here in my backyard. <laughs> we have a donkey. We have horses it's like as well. But I'm not saying that. Where are your horse friends? Okay, I'll let you eat. Remember, you remember how I said we we're going to see my little cousin for her 10th birthday well she went out of town so i didn't get to meet up with her today but i'll give her her gift later sometimes a day in the life it doesn't go as planned but you still roll with it right donkey no come here ellie come here ellie oh, it feels so good to just lay down I'm not fully under the cover because I need to take a relaxing bath. I'm still sweaty from the gym, but I wanted to give um, Ellie some TLC time. She loves eating time because she sleeps in a bed with me. That's one of her favorite parts of the day. It's really high up there next to dinner time. Ellie, come to mommy. Come, Ellie, come here. Ellie. She's a little preoccupied. So it's time. It's time for me to relax. I just lit a candle. We have the sun setting. I'm about to get in the tub. It's so relaxing for me with my back pain. I get to just relax and be at peace. Oh, you're, you're under the cover, nude. Yeah, it's time for dinner almost. 
time for Daniel. I just got out the bathtub. I'm about to enjoy Netflix and eat my applesauce. Here, here are the horses. Here comes the donkey again. Horses! Lisa Mona! They're eating. There's another donkey. Hey! Can she come say hi? <laughs> They're eating. We'll call this the Ellie cam. She's about to get eat dinner. I'll show you how excited she gets. <laughs> After a long day, I'm so excited to eat this s'more and put her in the microwave. So not necessarily a fireplace, a fire taste, but nevertheless. <laughs> in bed eating my salad Ellie is laying down this is one of the highlights of my days as well as being in bed eating relaxing with my noodle I call her noodle I want to show you my headscarf this protects my hair at night and sometimes I used to be embarrassed wearing this you know, as black women, or even around if I had my friends of different races, you know, but this is how it protects my hair. It's a part of my culture, and now you see me. We are getting a beautiful sunset. I call it cotton candy skies. I love sunset, because I love the night. It's mysterious, it's beautiful, it's resetting. I love the moon, I love the stars, and this is just the beginning of it. Thank you for spending the day with me. A day in the life of July 25th, 2020. 2020 is a very hard year, but there's beauty in it nevertheless. Never forget there's beauty in each day, and you'll never get this day back. Say bye, Ellie. <laughs> bye.